if at the end of each day, no matter how productive you are, if you're not feeling good about yourself, about the progress you're making, about the people you're with, about what impact you're having, you're not going to be able to sustain it for the long term. And fundamentally, our life is how we are today. If today you're happy, you're happy with life. If today you're sad, you're bored, you're apathetic, you're apathetic with life. It's so important not to wait for the future, but to make today a day that feels good. You can often be very effective as a leader without actually enjoying the process. How to be happier and more purposeful in 2020. Uh, Connor here in San Diego, a statue of the case remembering the end of World War II with the aircraft carrier here behind. I spent most of the last 16 years working with leaders to help them get clear on their objectives, get great teams around them, execute with that team. But one of the things that I've seen over my years with Vistage and Entrepreneurs Organization and Teaching and Business School is you can often be very effective as a leader without actually enjoying the process. And there's a case of many leaders who would trade places with many people in the organization. They're very effective as leaders in getting results, but they don't enjoy the day-to-day -day of their life. And the stresses uh, tend to be at overwhelming. They're, they're enabled to, to switch off and enjoy the process. So I put together seven mindsets that help those that are productive actually enjoy the journey as well. And I shared those seven on a Forbes blog post recently and it got quite a few views. So I thought I'd put that in uh, the form of a video. So here are seven mindsets that help you not only be productive, but also have a feeling of joy as you live this life. David Meister, an, an author and, and Harvard professor, has this to say about success. Success is enjoying your life. If you don't enjoy what you do, the company of the people you do it with, the impact you're making in the world, it cannot be considered success. So fundamentally, achieving results without enjoying the journey, without enjoying the people with which you're working and enjoying the, the impact that you are making, it's hard to consider that success. Uh, you're giving your life for something, but it's, it's not leading to you having a meaningful sense of the journey. And I don't think that's a really good use of life. I think life is to be felt meaningful. And there's some things you can do in your head to give a greater sense of meaning to life's journey. Think about what you can achieve in 10 years, not in a week. Think in terms of who you will become, your character, not what you will have, your possessions. Think in terms of process goals, not results goals. Think about changing your environment, not greater willpower. Don't negotiate with your excuses. Fix the little things, the big things will take care of themselves. Think why, who, how, not what, when, how. Think about what you can achieve in a decade and not in a week or a year. We so underestimate what we can achieve in a decade and we so overestimate what we can achieve in a day or a week. Anything worthwhile uh, from a business perspective, I, I think, is, is a 30-year goal. Jim Collins talks about the BHAG, the big, hairy, audacious goal. And I think only thinking at a 10, 20, 30-year time frame allows you to see the truly big things that you can achieve in your business and in your life. Think about your fitness goals at the end of this week. No amount of gym this week is going to change fundamentally your physique in five days. But thinking about what you want your health to be like in 10 years, thinking about what you want the relationships you have with your family and your friends to be like in 10 years, thinking about the home you live in in 10 years, you can really start to see some big things. Eric Schmidt of Google said, it's easier to achieve big dreams than it is to achieve little dreams because you can attract great people to, to achieve the bigger dreams. So I think the longer term dreams allow you to, to make it attractive for yourself, but also attract great people who want to join you in the journey. So think long term rather than short term to make life feel meaningful. 
Think about who you will become, not what you'll have. Uh, what you'll have depends on a lot of external factors and luck and opportunities coming at the right time. But the way you choose to be is something that you control. You can always choose to respond with kindness. You can always choose to respond with generosity. Whether you'll have a bigger house or a smaller house depends on a set of factors that are outside of your control. But whether you have been kind, whether you've been generous, whether you have mastered the things that you should know, whether you've become deeply competent in a set of skills, whether you've become great at helping others become great, those are things that it doesn't matter on luck, it doesn't matter on the opportunities. They are decisions that you can take and no matter what happens around you, you can achieve success in these. And very often, if over the long term you are generous, you're kind, you master something, you are great to have around in terms of helping others deliver more, the other material things are going to come. Jim Rohn always says, instead of thinking about what you want to have, think about the type of person you need to be to have those things. So think about who you want to become, not what you want to have. Process goals, not results goals. Process goals are completely under my control. Results goals depend on the market. In sales, I track how many phone calls, how many minutes of meetings that I have had this week. This is under my control. Whether the other person says yes or decides to, to buy is not under my control. If I want to lose weight, I decide to eat two, leave two bites unfinished on the plate, something under my control. If I'm feeling good and I go to the gym, I'll maybe hit the, the, the results goal. But I always try and put my goals in terms of process goals. Something completely under my control. Think about changing your environment, not finding more willpower. I spent many years speaking to high-performance athletes. Killian Jornet, Mikael Sunier, Joseph Akram. Spent some time with Pep Marie, the psychologist of the Spanish Olympic team. Time and time again, I realized these athletes do not have greater willpower than us. They understand they have the same amount of willpower as the rest of us, but they change their environment to make it much more conducive that they're actually going to do the exercise. Mikel Sunier tells me he, next to his door, leaves seven gym bags with the uh, shoes and the equipment in it with a water bottle inside so that it's ready. If you want to watch less television, take the batteries out of the remote control. If you want to eat less chocolate, don't let chocolate get into your house. Don't try and have more willpower. Change your environment to make it more conducive to the habits you do want to become a part of your life and less conducive for the bad habits that you would like to remove. Change your environment, not your willpower. Don't negotiate with your excuses. The moment you decide to do something, the moment you get up in the morning and you say you're gonna to go to the gym, your brain is gonna kick into excuse mode. It's gonna tell you, it's gonna move through three types of little voice excuses that will stop you from taking action. And there's nothing you can do to stop this. There's great artists, great productive people. Every morning, Stephen Pressfield says the resistance begins. Resistance with a capital R. It's these excuses in our mind that will talk us out of doing everything good. Often the, the cycle of life is you have an instinct to do something good. You then pause and you think. And in the thinking, you talk yourself out of it. And then you get emotionally frustrated or angry with yourself. Accept that your mind will keep on chattering and any good idea it will tell you why not to do it now, why to do it later, why to do it... <coughs> so just don't negotiate with your excuses. Fix the little things. Big things will take care of themselves. Your experience of joy in a day, it's often a couple of little setbacks, little interactions with people that piss you off, that suck the joy out of a day. Focus on removing the couple of little consistent things that repeatedly suck the joy from your day. Every afternoon, I take my journal and down love, hate, and I put just in the left column everything over the last 24 hours that has given me joy, that has made me feel more energy. Everything on the right that's just sucked. And I look for patterns, and very often it's little things that take joy. Fix those little things. Think why who, how, not what, when, how. 
in Vistage in an issue processing process, when we work with a leader to help them look at how they're gonna move forward on a challenge, an opportunity, the first question that we ask them after they've established what is the issue is why is this important to you? And we will stay with this question until we truly understand professionally, personally, why achieving this result or moving forward on this opportunity is something that is important to them as an individual human being, important to them in terms of the results they want to achieve. Why is this important? Only when we truly understand why something is important do we move on to who can, you, can help you, who is affected, and how are you gonna go about making this happen? So I think, why is it important? Who can help? And then move on to how you're gonna go through the steps to achieve it. If you think always on why is it important, it gives you greater meaning for the challenges that you're facing in life. So I hope those seven mindsets, they're just little shifts in how you pay attention to your day, help you move from not just being a productive person, get stuff done, but a productive person, person that at the end of the day has a feeling that the day was meaningfully used, that you feel happy about the way you're using your life. And fundamentally, our life is how we are today. If today you're happy, you're happy with life. If today you're sad, you're bored, you're apathetic, you're apathetic with life. It's so important not to wait for the future, but to make today a day that feels good. And, and I think you can have a crap day that feels good, a crap day in terms of productivity that feels good, and you can have a, a day that you get a whole lot done, but there's something that just leaves you feeling bad. And I think David Meister has it right. If, if at the end of each day, no matter how productive you are, if you're not feeling good about yourself, about the progress you're making, about the people you're with, about what impact you're having, you're not gonna be able to sustain it for the long term. So I hope you find these mindsets helping you not just be productive, but enjoy the journey in 2020. Again, Connor from San Diego, thank you for your subscribes, your likes, your comments. Um, here in San Diego for a Vistage Global Leadership event uh, with a thousand group leaders from around the world to, to learn and to grow together how to help leaders become more effective, uh, but also enhance the quality of their life. Have a great one.